Um, my name is Fox, I go by Fox Ellipsis, I come from Oxford, England. I'm playing 273 shows all over North America. I play for free every night, I sleep in my car, actually a true story, and I live off the CD sales. And those are outside, they're usually right in front of me, but I thought that was a really bad idea since you could not actually reach me if you tried today. So I put the CDs outside the door on a table. Um, basically, at the end of the show, I'll sign CDs if anyone wants one. There's an old one, a middle one, and a new one, and they're $10 each, and they're all double discs, so it's a big deal. But an even better deal is if you have your Florida State ID. If you have the ID, you can just show that, and you can get the full set for $30. And that's only today. So, at the end of the show, I'll sign CDs, but only at the end. Unless you have to leave. And if for any reason you have to leave before the end, then I'll, I'll interrupt the show to sign the CD if you want. It's a wonderful life. It's exhausting and it never stops. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but I love it passionately. Um, my fans have been incredibly generous. The CD sales have gone up dramatically. It was about three or four per show the first tour and I couldn't even eat off of that. Barely paid the gas money. Then it went up to six or seven in the 09 tour. But this year, in the 2010-2011 tour for the third album, it's been phenomenal. I've been selling 15, 20, 20, 25 almost every night and um, I've been able to actually you know pay pay my way as I go still not motel rooms but everything else has been taken care of so I feel incredibly lucky and, and delighted that it's gotten to the point where I can keep going without really worrying about where the gas money is coming from what happened with my I wanted to do this ever since I was a little kid. When I was like five years old, I used to watch people like uh, George Michael and Duran Duran on TV, but especially people like Nick Kershaw and Michael Jackson, who were both really popular in England right about when I was five. And they were both singing about stuff like the environment and the planet and, and political issues that you didn't hear much of in the 80s and especially not now in music. And even when I was five I knew that they were trying to make a difference and this was something that I wanted to do. That they were singing about things that were really important to everybody and I thought that it's my favorite thing is music and, and all these scary important things and I thought I want to be like that, I want to do that. Even when I was little, I remember this was the only thing that was important to me. And I feel like I lost my way as I got older, um, because one thing leads to another. My family are very success-oriented. My dad's family are very wealthy. They've done very well in terms of their education and then their careers, financially speaking. So I was under a lot of pressure to follow that path. Um, and and so I did do really well in school and I did focus on my academics and I went to Oxford, I got the degree and everything. Okay.
it was only after I graduated I was dating a girl from New York and she was the love of my life. She's still my best friend actually and, um, and she's the reason why I wear this thing right here which is because uh, she had breast cancer and she just recovered and she's doing okay now and um, I'm delighted that she's doing okay because losing her would be probably too much for me. After I got out of college, she told me, instead of going and jumping into a job and trying to make some money like the rest of your dad's family does, why don't you do what you really want to do? And I said, because it's impossible. And she said, why is it impossible? I said, because I can't sing and I'm nervous and you can't make any money doing this and, and there's no market for my kind of music. And she said, why are you sounding like your, your dad or your family for? You should, what do you really think? And I said, I really think that my music needs to be out there and there's not enough stuff about important messages and the environment and peace and I want to do it, but I just don't think I'm good enough. And she said, how do you know you're not good enough? When did you ever try it? And I said, you're right. So I said, I just don't have the guts to get up there. I just don't. And she said, yes, you do. I'm going to make you do it. And she just kept pep talking me and telling me how great everything was. And I, I wasn't good then. I've looked at the videos and listened to myself and it was really bad. But she like made me believe that I was somehow good enough to get up in front of people and sing. And there wasn't a great response because I really wasn't. didn't sound very good when I first started out. I was so nervous. I was quiet and shy and timid and tepid. She really pushed me up on the stage. She forced me out. As much as my family forced me into academics and the correct chosen path, she forced me into the, into the stage. And she did it several times until finally I was able to have the guts to do it myself. And once, once, um, once I was able to do it myself, I never looked back. And every day of my life since that day, I wake up in the morning and I think to myself, Oh my God, I'm so lucky that I get to do this again with my life. the fact that I'm getting just as many Republicans come to my show as Democrats. That's very important to me because I don't just want to sing to liberal, green, loving, environmentally conscious people. I want to sing to everybody and that's why I have, despite my liberal background, moved to the middle and my point, my stance on everything now is the only place we'll ever move forward as a human race is the middle. We can't stay on one side of the fence and another. I don't think that split is natural. I think the billionaires that have all the money manufacture this big fence and they make sure that all of our news networks are on one side or the other, that all of the states are blue or red. We're split like this and as long as we're split, we will never be able to have any real power because it's 50% versus 50%. Endlessly butting heads until kingdom come. My vision is that both sides could somehow realize we're all the same. We could meet in the middle, we could tear down the fence and we could say what's best for all of our kids and our future. I saw two polar bears swimming off the coast of Alaska. Polar bears can only swim for 180 miles and um, then they need to rest. 
but all the icebergs that they usually rest on are melting because of the rising temperature. So the polar bears get stranded in the middle of nowhere. And it's really sad. It was a documentary I saw, and it made me really sad. And I wrote this song after watching it. It's called Head for the Horizon. Ellipsis, and I come from Oxford, England. I live in my car, and I sing about peace and love and the environment in a different city every night. I love to make people laugh, whether it's children or old people, girls and boys, Republican and Democrat, black and white. Everyone comes to my shows because of Facebook and all my promotion, and they leave with smiles on their faces. I play for free every night and I'm playing 270 free shows all over North America. And if you missed the show that's near you, then hopefully you'll come to my show next year because I'm coming back in 2012 to do it all again. <laughs> 